What is time? We experience time as the transition of everything we see, touch, and feel through our senses from one moment to the next. We understand time as a chronicle of events, from the cosmological record of the Big Bang to the fossil record buried in layers of rock and soil, unearthed by diligent research, and through the written word since the beginning of the historical record. But is time real and a tangible thing? Or is it rather an illusion that our minds are tricked into believing because we are born into a physical universe? We perceive time as flowing in one direction, in one dimension, from the past to the present to the future. Some say the fact we comprehend time at all is a miracle. Our idea of time is a side effect of being human. When we consider our existence, our mind, our reality, the only time we really have is right now. When we think about the past events in our life, we say we are remembering the past, but we're not really remembering the past. Our mind is summoning up a record of our perceptions that we carry with us internally. So we're not really remembering the past, but rather experiencing a biological imprint our minds have made which can be experienced again and again in the present. But our minds are not going back in time to see an actual event. We are merely experiencing a copy of the event played through like a record on a record player. Our memories may be a mere private copy of real past events that make up our life, but that doesn't mean time is not real. There are theories that propose that if time didn't exist, then by necessity, nothing would exist. The French philosopher René Descartes in the 1600s wrote his discourse on the method of rightly conducting one's reason and of seeking truth in sciences. In it, he concluded, Je pense de je suis, which in English means I think, therefore I am, or I am thinking, therefore I exist. In concluding this by necessity, he concluded that action on his part is also taking place, the act of thinking. And since actions must take place through a stretch of time, time must also exist. But the philosophical implications of time and existence don't end there. Some take it a step further and say that since thought and time exist, something outside of thought must exist to be perceived by the mind. Something must exist that can be seen, felt, and heard, so the mind can form a record of it. That something is the laws of physics, of time, and space, of matter, and the known universe itself. Can we really put our finger on just what time is? In physics, we think of time as a dimension. We have three dimensions of space, which we think of as up, down, side to side, and back and forth. But for anything to happen in these three dimensions of space, time must pass. Otherwise, the universe is a motionless image of itself like a photograph that never changes. Without time, the laws of the universe fail to function at all. Without time, the laws of physics don't exist. Time is the magic that enables everything to work. We think of time as having a beginning and an end, but we think of space as going on forever. We even refer generically to the beginning and end of time, but do we really understand the implications of there being a beginning and end of time? It's not that simple. Maybe we think of time this way because the Big Bang points back to a finite beginning at a single point in time roughly 14 billion years ago. But the Big Bang theory doesn't imply that time did not exist before the Big Bang. In fact, there is strong evidence that time as we know it may have always existed. Because unlike the potential for a quantum fluctuation creating a Big Bang that starts the known universe, time had to be present for the quantum fluctuation to progress from nothing to something. The theory itself implies that in one instance there was nothing, and the next instance there was immense energy. Time existed in both instances. This means that time existed and was flowing before the universe as we know it began, enabling the spark of quantum energy fluctuation to start and progress, if indeed this is how the universe really started. Now, there is new evidence that suggests our understanding of time as a one-dimensional progression from the now into the future might not be how the universe really works at all. Recently. There have been experiments with a phenomenon in quantum physics that Einstein referred to as spooky action at a distance. As scientists, physicists, and philosophers wrestle with the implication of these experiments, our understanding of the universe grows. These quantum eraser experiments really test the limits of how quantum physics and Einstein's theory of relativity can coexist, and together, there are significant implications. 
implications suggesting that time must exist in both the normal way that we see time as one dimension moving forward and at least one more dimension allowing time to also move forward in its own measure of extra dimensional time. This makes for some mind boggling phenomenon. We know from Einstein's relativity that the faster we travel approaching the speed of light the slower time passes for us. In fact, the laws of physics suggest that if we could attain the speed of light in some futuristic spacecraft, time for us would completely stop. Of course, we can't reach the speed of light because it would take enormous energy. But if we could, we would in fact be frozen in time while traveling at infinite speeds. So if we could travel from one point to another at the speed of light, we would appear to leave and arrive at exactly the same time. And since no time would pass for us, we would appear to be in both places and in fact all points of space in between at exactly the same time. So if our spacecraft were a fancy sports car and we hit an asteroid that broke off a side mirror along the way, all three events, departure, crash, and arrival would occur simultaneously relative to us. So think of it, our sports car would be in all points of space at the same time and would both have and not have a side mirror at the same time, which sounds like quantum physics. However, relative to an outside observer, these events would be separated by great distances and vast expanses of time, which sounds like relativity. So, the laws of physics, time and space must be able to account for this phenomenon. Since these conditions are theoretically possible, both relativity and quantum physics theories must cover them. The laws of physics must account for both time frames and both spatial distances, even though it seems impossible. While traveling at the speed of light is only theoretically possible and is made impossible to achieve because of the energy required, there is something in the universe that does travel at the speed of light and doesn't require vast amounts of energy, and that is light itself. Each photon travels the universe frozen in time relative to itself. And just like the car with the one mirror that gets lost along the way, it can be in multiple conditions or states as it travels, and that cannot be known until it reaches its destination. We refer to this as a wave of possibility. And just like the driver of our fancy spaceship sports car, who cannot know his mirror was lost along the way until he arrives at his final destination and time begins to pass for him, we cannot know how a photon of light travels from one point in space to another until after it arrives. And just like our traveling sports car, since time relative to the photon is frozen, it travels instantaneously from one point in space to another, and it exists at every point along the way at the same time. But relative to an outside observer, time passes, and in the case of astronomical phenomenon, great expanses of time can pass. We know this is the way the universe works because of double slit experiments. Specifically, we know because of the delayed choice quantum eraser double slit experiment and something called quantum entanglement. A quantum entangled photon or pair of photons is the sports car and mirror from before on the quantum physics level. Even though a quantum entangled pair of photons may reach destinations separated by astronomical distances and great expanses of time, the state and pathway of the photon must be determined upon reaching the destination. And even though relative to an outside observer, these events may be far apart and separated by years, relative to the photon, the departure, separation, journey, and arrival of the traveling entangled pair must be resolved instantaneously in one point in space and time relative to the photons. But what are the implications of time frames relative to an observer being drawn out astronomically over millions of years, but relative to the traveler taking place in an instant or at no time at all? It means that you can have a universe where relativity and quantum physics clash in a spectacular symphony of harmonic coexistence. It means that phenomena must transpire over millions of years while at the same time be resolved in an instant. It means that two points separated by light years from each other must also be in the same place at the same time. So we are at an impasse if we only think of space as three dimensions and time as one dimension. In reality, distance and time are irrelevant. All points in space and time can be brought together into one place at one time relative to the traveler, while at the same time be separated by great distances and great expanses of time relative to the observer. One dimensional time and three dimensional space are not adequate to account for these mind boggling implications, but multi dimensional space time can. 
It is difficult to comprehend the nature of time itself, but it isn't necessary to sit for hours and ponder causality and the possible time paradoxes of working out the laws of space-time. Sometimes, you can just sit back with a nice cup of coffee or your favorite drink and just kill some time without having to worry that the universe just works. It always has and always will forever until the end of time. Thank <laughs> you.